Well, it is Listener Week and we are being driven by those messages and the emails and the texts and the tweets that come in. And in an email entitled, I don't know why I bother, Alyssa wrote into Woman's Hour asking for us to talk about ME, having lived with it for 10 years and, as she put it, spent at least seven of them nagging Woman's Hour to discuss it. So we are, and in light of long COVID too, because as she writes in her passionate email, the ME community has been flagging up the connection between what we experience, a post-viral illness which robs us of our lives, and long COVID. Even long, even before long COVID started to emerge, the ME community was discussing the dangers of a post-viral chronic illness arising from exposure to the COVID virus. So that's from Alyssa. I certainly hope Alyssa is listening live this morning because we are listening to her. Another listener, Judith, has asked for the same discussion Discussion, suggesting a guest, which is always very helpful, Dr. Nina Muirhead, a dermatological surgeon who, as she says, is taking a lead on educating doctors about ME. Well, I'm very happy to say Dr. Nina joins us now. She has ME herself and is a director at Doctors with ME. Our listener Judith says it's also a women's issue because three out of women, uh, three out of four ME sufferers are female, and women are also more likely to experience long COVID than men. Uh, And we're also joined by Dr David Strain, who has long COVID himself, uh, British Medical Association's lead on long COVID and medical advisor to Action for ME. So a warm welcome to both of you. Nina, if I could start with you with the absolute basics, what is ME? So ME is a complex neurological disease and it's characterised by debilitating fatigue, post-exertional malaise or symptom exacerbation after doing uh, mental or physical tasks where for hours, days or weeks afterwards you have multi-system symptoms, unrefreshing or disturbed sleep and cognitive impairment. But actually the list of symptoms is endless. It involves dizziness, palpitations, fainting, chest pain, shortness of breath, hot flushes, chills, inability to do what you could normally do in the week's or years before getting ill, you can't do it to the same level again. And most people then have to reassess what they can do in terms of their work, in terms of their social life. It is completely debilitating for some people who end up bed bound and tube fed. Yes, and, and, and I think, you know, that range is important to communicate, isn't it? Because it can affect people in different ways and to different degrees. Is it true that you you had scepticism about this before you yourself experienced it? Yes. So as an NHS doctor, I probably saw hundreds of patients with this condition before I got ill myself. And firstly, I had no empathy for how severe it was. And secondly, I didn't recognise it in many patients who presented with all of these symptoms. Um, having become ill myself following glandular fever, It is very obvious, the symptom pattern, um, and the biggest gap is in education. Doctors aren't taught to recognise this disease or even empathise with how severe it can impact the patient and their family members. Do you think that because of long COVID then, that there will be uh, better recognition or, or there will be, it will lead to something positive because of that? I hope so. Um... There are approximately an estimated quarter of a million patients with MECFS in the UK, and they have been treated for years with neglect and misunderstanding. And the new wave of post-viral um, patients with multi-system symptoms who are not wanting to be dismissed as anxious by healthcare professionals will hopefully shine a light on the plight of all of those who've been ignored and left in darkened rooms. David, let me bring you into this. Good morning. Um, Good morning. How widely accepted is it or has it been in the past that ME is caused by viruses? Um, uh, Amongst those working in the the, the CFS ME arena, it is recognised as a post-viral syndrome. Um, One of the, the hallmarks of CFS and ME are that other blood tests are normal. Uh, And that has led to part of the problem that Nina was describing. Um, Because there is this uh, almost undying faith in existing medical technology, if tests all come back normal, then the assumption was, uh, for many in medical school, that normal tests equal not a physical problem. Um, 
and it was easier to accept that than it was to accept the fact that we just don't have the right test yet, that we just don't fully um, fully understand what the body does goes through during infection, what it goes through in healing from infection, and what the aftermath of that healing process would be. One of the advantages that we've got with seeing long COVID is that all of the people who are suffering it, the, the 2 million or so that have suffered long COVID, have all had the same trigger. And of course, that's been something that's not there for CFSME. There are many different viral triggers that can cause these long-term conditions that Nina described so eloquently. Um, and, and just thinking about the, the, the your listener that um, wrote about that three out of four people suffering with CFS and ME are women. That's also the case for long COVID. We're seeing far more women with long COVID. Um, and this is a massive disease area that actually, if it had been appropriately researched 10 to 15 years ago when people like Nina were first uh, getting this, we'd be a lot further ahead with long COVID today. Do we know why, David, that it's more women than men? Uh, we don't. We believe that this is an autoimmune disease. Um, uh, we believe that it is something to do with your body uh, not finishing its uh, activation against your infection. And there are many other examples of autoimmune diseases that are more prevalent in women. Um, there, are, there are clear you know, genetic differences that uh, account for this. Um, and there are diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease disease and um, these sorts of diseases that are very well recognized because we have identified the antibody that says that these are more common in women we believe that long covid is um, more prevalent in women the great team at imperial have demonstrated a few of the antibodies that are there the problem with cfs and me is because there are so many different viruses that can trigger it it likely that there are going to be several different antibodies, autoantibodies that are created that all give a similar effect, but have a different underlying nature, which means there isn't one unique identifier across the board. Nina, just to come back to, as, as you're talking about this, I'm aware that we're, we're hearing um, chronic fatigue syndrome mentioned and ME. Um, are, are they interchangeable? Um no, most of the patients like to have this disease referred to as myalgic encephalomyelitis or encephalopathy, uh, which reflects the neurological uh, definition of the disease. Chronic fatigue is a real underestimate and it often causes general public to assume that the illness is not as severe as it is. So with exercise, People with ME have reduced cardiopulmonary function, reduction in their anaerobic threshold, cognitive impairment, which is exacerbated after exercise, and a prolonged recovery time and in increased acidosis. Exercise makes these people sicker. So that's and, what. So that's that's a distinction that w that we need to be very clear about in yes, because of how it affects treatment. Absolutely, it affects treatment, which is why um, patients report that. Graded exercise is making them worse, and it is something that needs to be taught at medical school and to me medical and healthcare professionals. Let's get on to treatments then, because new NICE guidelines, National Institutes of Health and Care Excellence, that's the body responsible um, advising doctors on treatments, which was meant to come out last week for ME, have been delayed. Uh, in what's been called an unprecedented move, there's been serious disagreement over how to treat those with ME. David, what, what do you think the treatments should be, or where, where do you come out on this? Um, so, as Nina says, exercise makes people uh, with this worse. It, it, it does cause um, symptoms to get worse. It takes longer for people to recover from a bout of exercise than the actual improvement in aerobic capacity that they could potentially get from that exercise. And so it has to go down this pacing route. Now, I say this, and there are some people who would suggest this is controversial. There are some people who would say the exercise has been the fix for them. And there are other sources of fatigue that exercise would be the source for. But uh, as Nina says, uh, myalgic encephalomyelitis or myelopathy, um, basically that is a physical condition that means that the body doesn't respond naturally. So it has to be pacing. It has to be doing things in, in small batches. Uh, the analogy that we use in clinic is quite regularly is that um, it's like having an old smartphone that you know that the battery is gonna die very, very quickly. Even if you start the day with a full battery, um, 
20 minutes in, you could be exhausted. And if you wait until the battery is dead, if you wait until there's nothing in there, it takes much longer to reboot the phone than it does from sitting down when you're at 20 or 30%, recharging it at that point, and then going on using it. And it's this whole pacing concept. The problem is that the, the, the research hasn't really focused on the right treatment for this disease. And, and part of that is with the, the stigma that's gone behind it is the, the so-called yuppie flu, as it was called in the 80s when I was in medical school. And we were taught that this is a functional disease with no abnormalities. So, so Nina, we need research. You need the research. Nina, what would you say in terms of that treatment question? Um. Well, I agree completely with David. We need far more research. There are supportive treatments for symptoms, melatonin, anti-inflammatories, um, sy symptom treatment for orthostatic hypertension, POX uh, medications, beta blockers, evabrogine, midodrine. They can be really helpful for patients to get some increased function and quality of life. But actually, in the first place, Doctors have to believe the patients. They have to listen to how badly they are affected because what they see in the medical encounter is not representative of how ill that person is. Have you, have you got hope now, Nina, if I can just cut in there for a moment, because of the long COVID uh, elements of this, that perhaps that research will now be forthcoming and this will be taken more seriously? Because the anger in Alyssa's email was palpable. I've always had hope. And I, and I do have a lot of hope, um, but I, I think there are major, major problems and the nice delay is the tip of the iceberg. What's happened here is there has been a lack of infrastructure set up in the NHS to actually deal with these patients. They need a consultant-led service. GPs need to be better educated and equipped to deal with day-to-day -day problems. Patients need regular reviews. Many of these patients have comorbidities and other autoimmune conditions or family history of autoimmune disease, which also needs dealing with separately. They can get urine infections, chest infections, just like everybody else, but often uh, present late or delayed or don't present for cancer screening because they're too sick to attend. So the whole infrastructure of the service to provide access to these patients is not well equipped and it has come to a head over long COVID. Um, if we'd have sorted this out, like David said, 15, 20 years ago, we wouldn't be struggling to provide a, a multidisciplinary team service for long COVID patients now. Dr. Nina Muirhead, thank you. And Dr. David Strain, thank you to you. And I hope to Alyssa, to Judith and to anyone else who wrote in, because there were several of you, uh, that perhaps goes some way to, to explaining how things may change and why things haven't to now and what needs to be done to move forward.